Good morning and happy Friday. My name is Michael Leiserman here with the Trial Guide's Tip of the Day. It's October 20th, 2023. Today's tip comes from the Trial Guide's video, Creating Magic in Trial by Randy McGinn. Um, Randy's here this morning. Um, give us a magical tip, please. Okay, let's end the week on a good one. Um, this is for cross-examination. Instead of controlling the difficult witness, what you want to do is expose them for what they are, whether they're lying, not answering your question, or waffling. The technique we use as lawyers should not be to force them to answer the question we want. It should be to expose the fact that they're not being fair with you and not answering the question. I, I love this. And I wonder your thought. I've, you know, I think of cross-examination and I think of a lawyer that says, I, now just answer the question I asked. And I've never done that in trial. I, it doesn't make sense to me. And I think you're getting to something uh, more important here. It's not about you controlling them. Uh, so, so can you give us an example? What do you mean by exposing something deeper? Okay. So, so by the way, this is the exact opposite of what I was taught in law school. Like you learn cross in law school, and they say, you, got, you must control the witness. You must ask these you know, short leading questions, blah, 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 and force them to answer your question. Um, I think that is counterproductive and it looks like you're hiding something from the jury. So there are a number of techniques that you can use to do that. Um, it starts with not being mean to them, but being nice to them, right? So, so, um, and I learned this from the only time my mother came to watch me in trial. And I was cross-examining somebody and um, I thought being really nice. And, and my walk out on the break and my mom says, why were you being so mean to that poor woman? And it made me realize that the jurors are not relating to us. They're relating to the witness. And if they don't know why, like you may know this, this expert is, lies and cheats and steals, but the jury doesn't know that yet. So if you start hot with, with him or her, the jury thinks you're the one being unreasonable. So it starts by being very nice and very polite, by asking a question and, and, and indeed asking short um, leading questions that they can't quibble with, like uh, the light was red, wasn't it, of a witness passenger in the front seat of, of their friend's car who ran the line. And then if the witness doesn't answer, and this is one technique, which I call the repeat, repeat, repeat technique, right? The light was red, wasn't it? Well, I don't really know. I, you know, I was looking the opposite direction. You repeat it again and softer. The light was red, wasn't it? Well, I'm just really not sure, you know. Um, and then you repeat it again, even softer. The light was red, wasn't it? And what it shows is, and, and of course you can impeach them because you've got their statement where they do admit the light was red. Um, but it shows that they're not answering, they're not answering your question. You're being really fair with them. They're not answering your question. Um, there is the repeat, repeat reverse technique where you say the light was red. Well, I don't know. The light was red. Um, you're not saying the light was green, are you? Where you reverse the question on them. That again exposes them. If if they are quibbling with the words you use, which you know, experts are notorious for and cross. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what uh, daylight means. I mean, the, the, the stupidest, the stupidest things. You know, <laughs> you you can. Uh, Ask them at a, you know, a couple times. I mean, first, first you have to analyze whether your question is fair and whether everybody does know what the word is that you're using. And if you think it's fair that they should know what it is, what I often do is go to the, to a flip chart and say, okay, let's, let's, let me write the question down for you. After you try, repeat, 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 they still won't answer. Like, let me write on the board. You tell me what word you don't understand. It was light out. All right. Do you know what it is? You know, I write it on the board is, you know what light is, don't you? You know what light is. And let him fibble with you in front of the jury. And you write it out and then say, now, okay, now let me ask my question. It was light out, wasn't it? Um, and it sure, again, exposes them to the jury for not answering your question. Um, and then it's okay to, to, when experts are doing what they're paid to do, which is go on and on and on, to say, just very politely, excuse me, and you use your hand, right? We come out from behind the lectern so we can 
use our body language to stop somebody. This is what you'd do if you were having a conversation with somebody and you wanted to stop them. You'd put your hand up and say, excuse me, I think you're answering more than I'm asking. What I was asking is this, then you ask the very short question. And if they continue to, if they continue to talk, um, that again exposes them. And so these are sort of progressive techniques. And as you use these techniques, you get progressively more aggressive. So you can, if they're still not answering your question, is there, you can ask if there's some reason you don't want to answer my question, right? I, so I, progressively, I, and, and at some point you will begin to feel the jury leaning forward saying, get them, get them, get them. And then you be, can become more aggressive and try to shut them down. Say, look, look, look I, know you're, I know you're being paid to be an expert in this case, but I really just want you to answer my question. Um, and, and never, never ask the judge to make him answer the question. And, and what will happen if you do these progressive techniques, at some point, the, ju the judge will get sick of it and the judge will jump in without you having to ask. This is great on so many levels. One is it shows that you're being fair. It builds your credibility, which we know is so important. Um, that you're credible and the one seeking truth in the courtroom. I also love, and you say this in your book, um, Changing Laws, Saving Lives, um, that you don't have, if you choose to be aggressive with a witness, and I think you can argue that there's really never a time you need to be aggressive, but if you choose to be aggressive, I think you wrote something about you need to earn it. Um, yes. Let the jury get frustrated before you do, right? Yes. And you can, you can hear them getting frustrated. They'll, they'll be, or they'll, again, the leaning forward thing. Oh, come on, go get him. Go get him because he's not, he's not answering your question. Go get him. And then when you feel that the jury wants you to, to do that, you can step it up just a little bit. I love that because if you really um, don't let your anger get the best of you, if you're centered and you notice that the jury is getting frustrated, in your mind you can know, I've got him. This is good for yeah. my case. That's exactly right. That's it. Well, thank you um, for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you for your trial guides book and video. If listeners and viewers don't have them, go out and get them. Um, thank you for being here this morning, Randy. Thanks, Michael. Let's pause, take a deep breath together. And just appreciate the fact that we are alive this Friday. May we use the time we have today to help reduce suffering in the world, to repair the world. May we fiercely and compassionately advocate for our clients and champion their stories. I'm going to ring a bell three times now. This can take you into a meditation practice, a prayer practice, or just remind you it's Friday. Wake up, go out, do good things, and have fun while you're doing it. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.